on this Saturday night. The National Guard moves in to quell the chaos. The riots and the rage overtake several states. So let's be very clear. The situation in Minneapolis is no longer in any way about the murder of George Floyd. What we know about George Floyd and the former Minneapolis police officer charged in his death. The call for answers in the death of a Toronto woman. She fell to her death after police were called in to help. What her family says happened. Plus, the debate over funding the World Health Organization after the U.S. pulls out. Godspeed, Bob and Doug. And the dragon lifts off. What today is about is, is reigniting the dream of space. Space exploration is back in style. Global National with Robin Gill. The fire and the fury in the streets of Minneapolis overnight as violence broke out during protests over the killing of George Floyd. The latest death of a black American at the hands of police officers has ignited uprisings in at least 30 states. But the vandalism and clashes with riot police have taken the spotlight off the calls for racial justice. There are concerns the destruction is being fueled by instigators taking advantage of the black community's grief and outrage. In Minneapolis, the governor has called in the National Guard. So if you are on the streets tonight, it is very clear. You are not with us, you do not share our values, and we will use the full strength of goodness and righteousness to make sure that this ends. We'll take you to Minnesota in a moment, but first, let's take you to Washington, D.C., where the protests are picking up in the U.S. Capitol. Jackson, we understand police have had to use tear gas. That's good. I have water. Uh, Robin, they deployed pepper spray actually a short time ago. Uh, there's essentially been a tense back and forth here with the crowd. So here's the situation. We are at a park that is across the street from the White House. The park has been barricaded by police, but several times the protesters have breached those temporary barricades. Uh, at some points, some protesters have thrown water bottles and rocks, and police have fired back small volleys of pepper spray at certain times. For the most part, though, these protests are remaining peaceful. And in fact, there are several protest groups that have been moving throughout Washington, Washington throughout the day today. Uh, a little bit earlier this afternoon, kind of gives you a flavor of what's going on. We saw protesters surround a Washington, D.C. police car. The officer left. There was no real confrontation. But then uh, we saw people start to, to move into the park, and that's really what touched off this confrontation. Uh, we're seeing large police movements throughout the city this evening at this point. And really the question is, where does this go from here? And I think, Robin, that's the question that uh, is being faced by many cities in America tonight. This is a very volatile time in the U.S. And the White House is in lockdown with the president inside. What has his response been? In fact, the president just returned to the White House uh, just in the past 10 minutes. He's been in Florida all day for the space launch. Uh, there has sort of been a, a, a tense messaging coming from the president. At one point today over Twitter, he actually suggested that his supporters, the MAGA crowd, Make America Great Again, should perhaps hold a counter protest. And Robin, you know that something like that would not go well. That would lead to further clashes. That counter protest did not materialize. The president, though, has also been in a showdown with local officials here in Washington, D.C., suggesting that D.C.'s mayor is doing nothing to keep the White House or city streets safe, and that's simply not true. Uh, D.C.'s police are out here along with the Secret Service. Are you getting a sense that Secret Service is confronting the protesters or vice versa like it was last night? They uh, are doing their best, I think, to hold the line. When you look in the park here, uh, those are parks, police, and Secret Service. And essentially what they do is they're standing in formation in riot gear. They will give verbal warnings when they want people to move back, which they did several times before they cleared the park. Uh, they seem content maintaining the perimeter uh, here outside the park. But we have seen Secret Service step up their presence throughout the day as well. They've taken up positions on top of several of the guard houses inside the White House compound so that they can have a better view of uh, the situation out here as it unfolds. Jackson Brasco in Washington. These protests are not just centered in Minneapolis and Washington. Demonstrations and riots are sweeping across the U.S. Jennifer Johnson reports. Minneapolis was ablaze again overnight as rage and riots overtook dozens of American cities. It's been hell. 
it's been a war zone. Protesters demanding justice after the police involved death of George Floyd. The now fired officer, Derek Chauvin, showed on video kneeling on Floyd's neck for almost nine minutes, has been charged with third degree murder and second degree manslaughter, charges not harsh enough to quell this fury. Minnesota's governor calls Floyd's death a murder, but he's pleading for calm. Last night is a mockery of pretending this is about George Floyd's death because our communities of color and our indigenous communities were out front fighting hand in hand to save businesses that took generations to build. Floyd's family is demanding a second independent autopsy after the county's medical examiner pointed to underlying health issues, not strangulation, as the cause of death. U.S. President Donald Trump says the federal government is ready to back up the state National Guards. We have our military ready, willing and able if they ever want to call our military. But we can have troops on the ground very quickly. Authorities have not charged the three other officers at the scene, although all were fired, further fueling charges of racism, not only in Minneapolis, but across the country. People of color and black people especially are not treated equal. There is so much racism in this country. No justice, no peace. Rioters also took to the streets in dozens of other cities. In Atlanta, landmarks including the CNN Center and the College Football Hall of Fame were attacked. This is not a protest. This is not in the spirit of Martin Luther King Jr. This is chaos. A federal protection officer was shot and killed, another injured, after shots rang out amid protests in Oakland, California. The county justice center set on fire in Portland, Oregon. And an angry mob tried to get through a barrier near the White House, which had to be put on lockdown. Nighttime curfews are in place but are being ignored, looters outnumbering law enforcement. Even some celebrities are weighing in, telling protesters to find another way. It is time to beat up prosecutors you don't like at the voting booth. It is time to hold mayoral offices accountable. Volunteers are now spending their weekend cleaning up the destruction, but protesters promise another night of unrest, unable to control their anger after another restrained black man died pleading for his life. Jennifer Johnson, Global News, Washington. Let's take you to Minneapolis now, where the city is under a curfew, but that hasn't stopped the protesters. The governor admits the police can't control the situation. NBC's Morgan Chesky is on the ground there. Morgan, what is the response to the National Guard moving in? The response will be uh, much more visible than what we've seen in nights past. But I do want to make a, a very clear difference between the protests that we have seen during the day here in Minneapolis uh, and the activities by the masses that have taken place uh, at night. And the governor acknowledged that also, uh, saying that 80 percent of the arrests that took place in the early morning hours and today were from people that were out of state. And so he was trying to draw that line as these are as these people are here. Uh, that there is are peaceful there are peaceful protests to be had and that are entirely separate from the devastation and the destruction that we've seen from those groups of people that have moved in at night and, and essentially had uh, free reign in certain parts of the city uh, because police were not able to uh, move in or simply chose not to so with the arrival of a thousand new national guardsmen today uh, that should definitely change the situation when that 8 p.m. curfew goes into effect this evening. However, any actual enforcement, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Robin? Morgan, is it fair to say that these protests have degenerated into chaos? I think it depends on what protest we look at, because during the day, protests such as this one uh, have existed in, in a very peaceful manner, uh, beginning about uh, a mile away from here, near the 5th Precinct Police Station in Minneapolis, before marching uh, to this intersection where we're at right now, and we're very close to where George Floyd lost his life on Monday evening. Uh, and so right now, crowds have been keeping relatively uh, peaceful. Uh, however, we've seen the disintegration of peaceful protest uh, into looting, into vandalism, uh, earlier this week. So it's a case by case basis, Robin. I think that uh, officials are trying to make sure that people understand it's certainly safe to come out here, to gather, to try to send their message as best they can. Uh, but what will not be allowed uh, anymore, uh, at least the governor is trying to prevent it from happening, is what we've seen the past several nights. Uh, and that's been block by block, uh, lit on fire, vandalized, and looted, uh, really turning parts of Minneapolis. Minneapolis uh, into unrecognizable areas. Robin? But has the message of what happened to George Floyd been lost? Uh, 
I would answer that question, Robin, by saying that for these people, the message for George Floyd has definitely not been lost, and that's why they feel it's even more incumbent upon them to come out here today to peacefully protest, uh, to gather in this way um, in a very diverse group because them, their message that George Floyd did not die in vain and that justice will be served is what they're trying uh, to send. And this is very much a, a reaction uh, to not only George Floyd's death, but to the damage we've seen night in and night out here in Minneapolis, because the people here tell me that they're afraid that all of that violence will overshadow uh, what they're calling a peaceful message. So uh, there is a, a lot of... Um, dissension and, and, and anger still in, in what happened to George Floyd. Um, but the group of people that uh, I'm gathered uh, surrounded by today, uh, they very much want to have justice pursued, but they want to separate themselves from that group of people uh, that have caused so much damage in this city. Robin. Morgan Chesky in Minneapolis tonight. Thousands marched in Toronto today in response to the death of a young black woman. Regis Korczynski Packet fell from the balcony of her apartment while officers were inside. A lawyer for the family says her mother called 911 out of concern because her daughter was in distress over a family conflict. Morgan Campbell reports. Thousands of people gathered at Christie Pitts Park in Toronto's Midtown, rallying against Indigenous and anti-Black racism across North America. We got to show support, right? There's a lot of things happening uh, around the world, and we have to make sure we show solidarity um, at all times. And it's important that we make sure that we know that Black Lives Matter. Saturday's rally was sparked by the death of Regis Korczynski Paquette. The 29-year-old had fallen from an apartment balcony Wednesday. This happened in my neighborhood, uh, Regis uh, Korczynski Patek, so I'm mortified. Um, and I just wanted to do what I could to, to help support this. The protest wound its way through city streets, leading the way were members of the Kokotinsky Paquette family. Her family believes police played a role in her death. The incident is now being investigated by Ontario's police watchdog. We should keep our solidarity together. That's very important for me. sense that the demonstrators are willing to disperse yet? You know, Robin, they ended their protest here at Toronto Police Headquarters well over an hour ago. They're still here. They're chanting Black Lives Matter. They really want some answers as to what exactly happened on that balcony Wednesday. However, police are only saying that they respect their, their decision to protest and stand up for what they believe in. Robin? Campbell in Toronto. Coming up, finally lifting off despite the weather concerns, the Dragon goes into space. And Canada's stand on funding the WHO after an ally pulls out. Despite being the hardest hit by COVID-19, the U.S. is severing all ties with the World Health Organization. Its primary role is to lead the response to global health issues like the pandemic. But President Trump has been critical of the organization's handling of the virus. And the U.S. is the biggest financial supporter. So now other countries, including Canada, could be asked to fill the gap. Here's Mike LeCouture. They have failed to make the requested and greatly needed reforms. U.S. President Donald Trump had threatened to sever ties with the World Health Organization and withhold funding. Now, it's official. We will be today terminating our relationship with the World Health Organization and redirecting those funds. To those funds total $550 million Canadian, or 15% of the WHO's overall budget. Canada's annual contribution is $17 million. Now, we added another $17.5 million in response to COVID-19, and we could be sending more money to the WHO. And the WHO did put out a further appeal recently for an additional uh, $1.4 billion, and we are considering what an appropriate response would be. So there is likely to be an additional response to the WHO, but will it fill the gap that the U.S. is, is leaving? It, not, not just Canada alone. Germany's health minister tweeting, the WHO needs reform, adding the EU should engage more financially. 
It's unclear if European countries will step up, but many countries, including Canada, agree that reform will only come from a post-pandemic review of the WHO's response to COVID-19. While our government isn't commenting directly on the U.S.'s decision to cut ties with the organization, Canada's position is clear. We would rather be part of that process, pushing for more transparency, pushing to have, you know, a better, stronger response, um, as opposed to taking ourselves out of the conversation. The president of the European Commission is also calling for global cooperation and solidarity, while asking the U.S. to reconsider its decision to leave the WHO. Mike LeCouture, Global News, Ottawa. Still ahead, the crisis in Hong Kong and the British offer to its former colony. A handful of Beijing supporters marched to the U.S. consulate in Hong Kong today to demonstrate against what they call American interference. Yesterday, President Trump said the U.S. would end preferential economic treatment of Hong Kong. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson says China's tighter grip on Hong Kong violates the one country, two systems framework. Beijing agreed to that when it took back the former colony. Crystal Gumansing reports. Fear over China strengthening its grip on Hong Kong has hit another flashpoint. To take my last breath, I will come out and fight for freedom. They are trying to suppress as much as possible. The full scope of the legislation is not known, but world leaders say it reaches into areas seen as protected. China agreed when in 1997 the UK handed over control of Hong Kong that for 50 years it would retain a capitalist economy, the justice system would be maintained, as well as human rights and freedoms. As a pressure tactic, millions in Hong Kong with or eligible for British national overseas passports could be granted extended UK stays. Remove that six month limit and allow those BNO passport holders to come to the UK and to apply to work and study for extendable periods of 12 months, and that would itself provide a pathway to future citizenship. The pandemic quelled protests, but for a year there have been large and at times violent clashes between pro democracy groups and officials. The current government is seen as beholden to China. If I can sacrifice for Hong Kong, I would do so. This is my home. What I have, this place gave me. I will fight on to the last day. China claims it is protecting national security. But the truth is that Hong Kong was secure and prosperous as a free society. The United States, which has been at odds with China, hit the country with new sanctions and will revoke Hong Kong's special status in terms of American trade and travel. As expected, China hit back. The spokesperson for the foreign ministry saying if the U.S. is determined to harm China's interests, China will take necessary countermeasures, adding no country has the right to interfere in China's internal affairs. Like many political issues involving China, the new security legislation is being presented differently. Chinese state media interviews talk about the need for the changes in Hong Kong and how they're welcomed. That is not the message from those who risk their safety on the streets this week. We must stand up and fight and to let Beijing to know that we will never surrender. Justin Trudeau is calling for calm and a path that, quote, allows for prosperity in a way that citizens in Hong Kong expect. Crystal Gamansing, Global News, London. Up next, second time's the charm for historic launch. Two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. You're watching history in the making. SpaceX has become the first private company to launch humans into orbit. Two NASA astronauts are on board the Falcon 9 rocket, marking the first human spaceflight from the U.S. in nearly a decade. And it almost didn't happen. On Wednesday, bad weather halted the mission 17 minutes before liftoff. This time around, it came down to the last hour. 
It will take 19 hours for the Crew Dragon to reach the International Space Station. NASA reports at least 1.14 million viewers tuned in online to watch the high-stakes launch. The company behind the mission is owned by Elon Musk, the same guy who brought you Tesla. And this mission takes space exploration to a new level. Lift off of the Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon. One rocket launched the U.S. into a brave new era of space exploration. T plus 30 seconds into this historic mission. For the first time, a private company, SpaceX, did the heavy lifting, taking two American astronauts into orbit. Veteran astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Behnken taking part in the mission. It's safe to say space travel has never looked like this before. From the designer suits to the ship itself, full of sleek screen controls, the founder of Tesla behind this venture. What today is about is, is reigniting the dream of space and getting, getting people fired up about the future. The journey of the Crew Dragon is intended to restore America's ability to launch its own astronauts into space since NASA retired its shuttles in 2011. This is definitely one of the vehicles I might fly on, which is pretty exciting for me to get to see it fly. Canadian astronaut Jeremy Hansen is waiting on his own future flight assignment and has watched NASA's experiment in private space travel closely. Does that open up the doors for more and more frequent space exploration? Oh, most definitely. I mean, there's no, no other way to look at it. Um, in fact, you know, we, in, we see it as increasing our ability to do, um, accomplish our goals from a government, as a government body in space. He believes it opens the door for more frequent space exploration. That includes a return to the moon and beyond. The Crew Dragon is one of several commercial spacecraft under development in partnership with NASA. All of this ultimately is for a purpose, and that is to get to Mars. Everything continuing to look good. The astronauts are headed to the International Space Station, where they'll spend a few months in orbit before completing their mission. And they'll return to Earth the same way they left it on board that privately owned spaceship. And that is Global National for this Saturday. I'm Robin Gill. Tonight, your Canada is this rainbow in northern Saskatchewan. Thank you for watching. Good night.